Today I'll be showing you how we can use the Arrhenius equation to find the activation energy for a reaction. I'm going to start on familiar ground with the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve, since this is where it all begins. A Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve shows us the normal distribution of molecules in a population or particles. On the y-axis we've got the number of particles with a specific energy and on the x-axis kinetic energy. And there is nothing unexpected here. What we see is that very few molecules have almost no kinetic energy at all. Most molecules or particles in our reaction have some energy and once again very few particles or molecules have a huge amount of energy. Now the activation energy for a reaction is the minimum amount of energy that two colliding particles must possess in order to react. And this barrier, because essentially that's what our activation energy is, this barrier to the reaction is set quite high for the majority of the reactions, somewhere between 10 and 100 kilojoules per mole. In contrast, at room temperature, the average thermal energy of a molecule is round about 4 kilojoules per mole. Which means that the majority of molecules can be busying around in our reaction and colliding all they like, but they don't have enough actual energy to react. The molecules or particles that have enough energy to react is this fraction here. And it turns out to be roughly 1 in 10 to the 9 molecules that have sufficient energy to overcome this energy barrier, to overcome the activation energy. If the area under the curve is proportional to the total number of particles, then the fraction of particles with energy greater than activation energy is given by the ratio of essentially the shaded area, as in this area here under the curve divided by the total area under the curve which equates to the number of particles that have got an energy greater than the activation energy divided by the total number of particles total number of particles. Maxwell and Boltzmann derived a mathematical expression for this fraction, number of particles with energy greater than activation energy divided by the total number of particles. And they said that the fraction of particles, let me find some space, that the fraction of particles in a reaction vessel um, with energy greater than the activation energy was equal to e to the power of minus activation energy divided by rt where r is the gas constant 8.31 Per Kelvin per mole and T is the temperature and that's in Kelvin. Because the gas constant is in joules per Kelvin per mole, the activation energy is in joules per mole, not kilojoules per mole. So what is this equation telling us? The important thing to note about this mathematical expression is that this term here, gas constant times the temperature, is telling us that the higher the temperature, the greater the probability that a particle possesses a particular energy, 
For particles to react, their energy must exceed the activation energy for that reaction, which suggests that at a given temperature, the rate of a reaction must be proportional to the fraction of molecules with energy greater than the activation energy. So rate is proportional to E to the minus Ea over Rt. Now, the thing about rate is that during a reaction, it changes. We know that because if I were to um, measure the concentration of a reactant over time, we would see that as the reaction proceeds, the reactant get used up and the rate, the gradient of our curve decreases. The rate is slowing down. So it makes more sense to think in terms of the rate constant k. If we were to take a general reaction, A plus B goes to form C plus D. And let's say the rate equation for this reaction was rate equals k. Let's make it uh, first order with respect to A and first order with respect to B. If I were to carry out the reaction between reactant A and reactant B at a number of different temperatures, but I kept the concentration, the initial concentration of A and B constant, as temperature would increase, I would expect the rate of the reaction to increase. If the rate of the reaction is increasing, the rate constant must also be increasing because the concentrations of A and B are constant. So temperature increases, rate increases, the rate constant must also be increasing. So our rate constant is a good general measure of the rate of the reaction at a particular temperature. If the rate is proportional to the number of particles that exceed activation energy or have an energy that's greater than activation energy, minus Ea over Rt, then the rate constant must also be proportional to the number of particles with energy greater than the activation energy. So K is proportional to E to the power of minus Ea over Rt. And this is the basis for the Arrhenius equation. Our Arrhenius equation is rate constant equals A E to the power of E A over R T. So this here is our Arrhenius equation. Now we know what most of these um, letters stand for. K, of course, is our rate constant for our reaction. E to the power of minus Ea is our activation energy. Gas constant temperature. But what is A? A is called the Arrhenius constant or the pre-exponential constant or often the pre-exponential factor. So pre-exponential factor or the Arrhenius constant. And the key here is that it's a constant. There are a number of things that contribute to the value of this constant. The fraction of the collisions that have the correct orientation, size of the particles, and their speed. So if I were to carry out my reaction between reactant A and reactant B at different temperatures and derive a value for the rate constant at each of these temperatures, I could plot a graph of rate constants against temperature. And you can see that what we have here is an exponential increase. 
the rate constant increases exponentially with temperature for reaction, which means that it's increasing faster and faster and faster. The Arrhenius equation is telling us that the rate constant increases with increasing temperature because more colliding particles have got sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy. Now the term e to the minus ea over rt, if we remember, gives us the fraction of collisions with the required energy to react. And as the temperature increases, so this number at the bottom here gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this term minus ea over rt is going to become smaller and smaller and smaller until it approaches zero at very high temperatures. This term approaches zero. Now, e to the power of zero equals one. You can put it into your calculator and check that. So at exceedingly high temperatures, this term here equals 1, which means that all collisions have sufficient energy to react, in which case the rate constant k is equal to our, our Arrhenius constant, our pre-exponential factor. Now, this is all theoretical, because in reality, when we get to the kind of temperatures we're talking about for minus Ea to the power of Rt to approach zero, then it's so high that our reactants are pretty much dissociated into atoms. As lovely as our Arrhenius equation is, it's actually far more useful if we linearize it. By linearizing it, we're turning it into an equation in the form of a straight line graph, y equals mx plus c. So let's start with our Arrhenius equation, k equals a e to the power of minus ea over rt. The first thing we need to do is take the natural logarithm of both sides. So that becomes ln k is equal to ln a plus minus ea over rt. I'm now going to separate out the temperature function. So we become ln k equals ln a plus minus ea over r times 1 over t. I'm hoping we can see now that y equals c plus mx. So if I were to plot 1 over t on the x-axis against the natural logarithm of the rate constant on the y-axis, my gradient, m, would be minus the activation energy divided by the gas constant, and the natural logarithm of our pre-exponential factor would be the intercept with the y axis. So let's just put that on. So we're going to plot 1 over t on the x-axis. We're going to plot natural logarithm of the rate constant on the y-axis. Our gradient is going to equal minus Ea over the gas constant. And natural logarithm of our pre-exponential factor is the intercept on the y-axis. And this is typically what a graph looks like. Natural logarithm of the rate constant on the y-axis, 1 over temperature on the x-axis. Note the units here, Kelvin to the minus 1. If I were to find the gradient of this straight line. So that would be change in y over change in x. So my gradient equals minus Ea over r. 
Note that the gradient is always going to be negative. Our line is falling. So that means Ea is going to equal minus the gradient times R. If we extrapolate our line back until it hits the y-axis, we have our intercept. Remember the intercept C in the equation y equals mx plus C is equal to the natural logarithm of the Arrhenius constant or the pre-exponential factor. And by default, our intercept of the y-axis is happening when our x-axis is at zero. And we've already seen that when one over t approaches zero, either temperature is very, very, very high, so high that pretty much all our particles possess activation enthalpy, so they're all going to react when they collide, then we saw that that was when e to the minus ea over rt was equal to one, and at that point, the rate constant was equal to the pre-exponential factor. Asking you to find the activation energy for a reaction using the Arrhenius equation is a really common exam question. You need to know the Arrhenius equation. So k equals a e to the power of minus ea over rt. You need to be able to convert it into the form of a straight line graph, y equals mx plus c. So ln k is equal to ln a plus minus ea over r times 1 over t. You need to know that given a set of results, you could calculate the natural logarithm of the rate constant at different temperatures, and you would plot that on the y-axis no units, and you would plot one over temperature on the x-axis and the units are Kelvin to the minus one. Make sure that your temperature is in Kelvin. Sometimes they give it to you in degree C and you need to convert it. The gas constant R is always given to you on your data sheet, 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. And that the gradient of your line is going to equal minus Ea over R. Therefore, to find the activation enthalpy, energy is going to be minus the gradient times R. And your activation energy is going to be in joules per mole because the gas constant was in joules per mole. So if you need it in kilojoules per mole, you are going to have to divide by a thousand. One other useful thing we can do using the Arrhenius equation is to find the value of the rate constant at one temperature if we know its value at another temperature. Let me explain. So if I know what the rate constant is for a reaction at one temperature, So T1 for the temperature in our first reaction. I can find the rate constant for the same reaction at a different temperature. So 1 over T2. So we've got our Arrhenius equation at our first temperature. Say that was, I have no idea, let's go with um, 273 Kelvin. And at a second temperature, 300 Kelvin, what would the rate constant be? What I need to do is to combine these two equations, and I'm going to do it by subtracting the first equation from the second. So that becomes ln K2 minus ln K1 is equal to Ea over R. 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2. And we can simplify this expression into the form of a ratio. 
because natural logarithm of one value take away the natural logarithm of another is the same as saying ln k2 over k1 is equal to the activation enthalpy over the gas constant 1 over the first temperature take away 1 over the second temperature. Now you wouldn't be expected to come up with that equation yourself but you might be asked to use it and then comment on your result. So let's have a look at a practice question. So given that the activation energy for the reaction between methane and hydroxyl radicals in the atmosphere is 20.3 kilojoules per mole, calculate the ratio of rate constants for the reaction at 25 degrees C and minus 55 degrees C and comment on our answer. If we go back to our equation, ln K2 over K1, so this is the ratio that we're talking about, the ratio of rate constants is this bit here, is minus to Ea over R, 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2. Well, we know our activation energy. Our activation energy is 20.3 kilojoules per mole. That is actually 20,300 joules per mole. We know what the gas constant is. It's 8.31 joules per kelvin per mole. T1 and T2. The first temperature is always the lower one, the second one is the higher one, but we do need to convert them into Kelvin. So we need to add our 273, 25 degrees plus 273, that comes to 298K, minus 55 plus 273 comes to 218K. 218 is T1, the lower temperature, and 298K is T2. Or higher temperature. So if I were to put all my numbers in, I end up with ln K2 over K1, so that's our ratio of rate constants, is equal to 20,300 divided by 8.31, 1 over 218 minus 1 over 2 nine eight and when you plug that into your calculator we end up with natural logarithm of our ratios k2 over k1 can't draw little k's today no idea why that comes out to 3.01 remember that's the natural logarithm of our ratio we want to know what the actual ratio is so our actual ratio, K2 over K1, is equal, if we need to do the inverse function, e to the power of 3.01, and that comes out at 20.3. Our ratio of rate constants is 20.3. What does that actually mean? Well, what it means is that at room temperature, at the higher temperature, 298K, our rate constant is 20.3 times greater than it is at minus 55 degrees C. And since we know that given the fact that our concentrations remain the same, we know that rate equals K um, and our reactants our methane and our hydroxyl radicals. If our concentrations remain the same, then if our rate constant is increasing by 20.3 times over that temperature range, so is the rate of the reaction. In the blurb below is a link to the Crunch Chemistry website where you can find the notes for this video and a couple of practice questions, both in drawing graphs and using the equations and all the forms that we've talked about. 
If this has been useful, then please hit the like button, subscribe and share. It makes a huge difference to a small channel like us. I look forward to seeing you next time.